All right, so I went ahead and put this timing chain on. We went with a full roller, Edelbrock sells it. It comes with, uh, you know, the gears and everything you need, except for the bolts, of course, and the key wet. I don't understand why. When I bought this crank rotating kit, it didn't come with any keys in it. Uh, what are they called? Wood roof keys. <laughs> Neither did the gears, so I had to go out and uh, find a key at Lowe's and cut it down and get it to fit. So after we did that, once you're sliding this bottom gear on though, this one has three ways you can put it on for advancing it four degrees or retarding it four degrees. We went ahead with straight up. When you're putting this on, just make sure that once you get it past that key, right, it has it has a surface that it's pressed on. If you guys could, I would go ahead and uh, get a really long bolt with no nut on the end and drive it all the way down on this snout. And you'll use it later for other applications, but putting a headless bolt through here allows you to take a nut and washers, or you can use pipe, exhaust pipe, and allows you to push it on with the threads of that rather than pulling on these little bit of threads you know until you get down deep you don't want to mess the the threads up in this snout once you draw this all the way on or as soon as you see this key coming out you guys need to start putting your camming gear on and making sure that it's lined up we don't want to we don't want to drive it all the way on there and then find out that we need to pull it out a little bit so we want to take small steps as we get closer to it just to make sure that they're in line it just so happened that all the way flush happened to be a, a straight line for us. Again, this is a, a full roller setup. This chain's a little bit thicker than the uh, stock one. If you guys do run a double chain or a dual roller or anything like that, you're going to have to get a bigger cover. It's also important because of the thickness of this of this chain that we went ahead and rechecked it. So again, I put Play-Doh on my bolts, I put Play-Doh on here, and I smashed it down to make sure that I had plenty of clearance for this timing cover, which we do. We Loctited the ones behind it, right, the retainer for the camshaft, and we Loctited these as well. I would definitely recommend you use Loctite. I would have used this, it's like $4.99 for the, for the bolts and for the lock, but uh, this lock does not fit on these bolt on this uh, bolt pattern. I've seen people drill these out and everything else. I'm I'm not doing that. I I have full faith in this Loctite. Definitely do not use engine oil. Use Loctite. The benefit of having a full roller, yes, it is more expensive, um, but it's going to save us on wear and everything else. Here are one of those keys that you can buy from Lowe's or Home Depot. For some reason, no auto parts store has them. I don't know why every engine has a woodroof key or several woodroof keys, but uh, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to file that down and make sure it fits. For the harmonic balancer, you're gonna need a square key. Uh, those are half moon shaped keys for the uh, for the timing gear. All right, next we're gonna run these studs in this head because they're all in the water jacket. We have to use a sealant. What I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use standard pipe thread for water lines. Uh, this is a he heavy duty thread seal tape. It specifically says four water lines. It's a Blue Hawk brand. It works. We're going to do a couple wraps around each thread. And then in the, in, the, um, in the block itself, just to make sure that it gets down to the threads, we're going to put some Permatex uh, high tech gasket, gasket sealant. And again, if you read the back of this, it also says uh, protects from antifreeze. So the two of these together should keep us from, from leaking. I've used Loctite in the past. I've used tape and Loctite in the past. As long as you're, you're doing something, there's several different things that work. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the, of the compounds themselves that are supposed to just seal it. I like having some sort of tape. So I clean out each one of these holes with carb cleaner and brake cleaner, and then I spray it with air to ensure that I got everything out. Let it dry. If you want to let it dry for like an hour, that'd be good. But uh, I wrapped up all my threads with the with the sealant and then I come through and literally I, I get the tack on, on my on my stick, right? 
and I stick it down in the hole and I just wipe one side. Then I take the same thing and wipe the other side. Right? And this just makes sure that it makes it down into the hole. All right, now's the moment of truth. We're gonna put these cylinder heads on here, clear the engine down, and make sure that there's no contact during valve overlap. We wanna make sure that there's plenty of clearance and room for when those valves heat up and everything gets nice and hot and still have plenty of clearance. A little backstory, I called Molly and Edelbrock and tried to get them to mesh up and give me the right information as far as what pistons fit what heads, what domes fit what heads. Edelbrock explains to me, they said, well we just send our heads out to everybody, to all the big manufacturers, piston manufacturers, and they create their pistons off of, you know, generic head designs, so that way their pistons fit as many heads as possible. So then I call Molly, because those are the pistons in this kit I ordered, and I asked Molly, hey, you know, do these pistons fit this head? And they said, sir, well, we can't, we can't tell you for sure. Edelbrock couldn't tell me for sure. They said, we can't tell you for sure. You're just going to have to, uh, you're just going to have to measure it and check it out. We can't tell you what cam you have. We can't tell you all this other information, you know. Uh, and I said, well, well, are these damn pistons going to, going to hit the top of these heads? Are they even going to fit in the hole? And all they could tell me was these pistons are de designed for open chamber heads which is what we have. If you guys don't buy marine heads, I, I bought marine heads, There's, this is not a marine motor, I bought marine heads because they are open chamber and I got a 110cc, these are two and a quarter valves and uh, it should flow pretty good. I like open chamber heads, it's what I wanted. Uh, if you look at if you look at this casting number, it's actually casting 6045 so if you look at their 6045 heads, they're all semi-open, which is, which is not as good as an open chamber, right? It doesn't flow as well as an open chamber, uh, but they do, flow, they do flow pretty good, and usually people just uh, big, get bigger runners and stuff like that to fix that problem anyway. We're going to go ahead and clay the top of this piston, set this head on here. I'm actually going to put this head on here with no gasket. and. I'm doing that because I don't want to compress my gasket twice. I just want to compress it one time. I could put shims on it. Um, I don't think we're going to have any clearance issues, but we're going to turn it over nice and slow and we'll find out real quick. Here's what we got. We can see an indentation around this dome. It almost looks like, if you look at the one next to it, you can see how the, the dome shaped up. Maybe you can see the cylinder a little bit better. You can see this dome kind of comes down like a heart to the intake valve right here. So it's doing that right here. You can see that there's plenty of space, and that's just uh, that's not that's not for valves. It's just uh, for the chamber itself. So you can see that there's we can measure it. So we'll take this piece off. Now, to, this is just to the surface, this amount here, and it's saying that to the surface of this piston, there is almost two tenths of an inch of space. But around the dome, right, where, around where it's shaped around this uh, dome and fit into the head, you can see the shape right here that this, this made as it stamped into it. We have even more room.
right? So two and a half, two and a half tenths of an inch. Yeah, 2.5 tenths of an inch. There's, there's plenty of space there. Like I said, we were worried about valve overlap. These valves didn't even make an indentation in this when it pushed it down. I mean, I, I can see the heart shape of the dome here. But again, uh, spark plug's clearly not in the way. It didn't make any contact. It does look like the valve t actually touched right here. But as deep as this cutout is, I mean, you, you can see how deep this cutout is. So if the valve touched here, which is the thickest spot, We have 3.4 tenths of an inch. Yep. 3.4 tenths of an inch. Alright, so on the cam, cam card it says check the valve train for interference. Check the valve to piston clearance. Must have 0 0.09. And we have 0.34. So you could run twice this dome. I, I've seen a lot of those 40cc domes. I, I, I assume you'd be fine. I think once you start getting up that high, though, you may have some issues with that spark plug. But yeah, it's right there, 0 0.09 minimum clearance. And I have four times that amount.